uh, hear me out for like you know next uh, 45 minutes or like you know whatever time it is but then um yeah this this topic is like you know very uh, important for any uh, mules of implementation to be uh, successful so with that uh, i mean i mean so basically there is a safe harbor statement here both speaker and host are organizing this organizing this meetup uh, in individual capacity only we are not representing our companies here uh, presentation is strictly learning purpose only organizer pre presenter do hold any responsibility that same solution work for your business requirements also presentation is not meant for any promotional activities so i guess like you guys agree on that so let's said the, that said let's move on um, so guys like you know we have uh, trivia questions coming up uh, during the meetup i mean during this entire course of uh, our uh, uh, our topic today and then uh, we will be picking up uh, three winners to uh, basically give them um, uh, give them course vouchers and certification vouchers um sonali if i did i say that right yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Right, we have the uh, three uh, trivia quiz questions and who are the winners definitely they will get the uh, vouchers training vouchers thank you so much arvin yeah no problem uh, sonali and guys with that like you know start off our topic any point visualizer can did anybody any one of you work with this product or were you uh, i mean like you know did you explore this product in prior to uh, uh, this meetup or like you know in your projects or wherever uh, 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 so this is uh, this is one of the very important uh, the, this product is like really a cool one like you know I, I like this product because it gives me so many insights and now everything is data driven these days so any point monitoring is like you know one of those tools every company needs to monitor their applications and then we we had to in the in the past we had to rely on different products to do the monitoring across our enterprises so now MuleSoft have come up with their own solution, and then uh, this has been there for uh, quite a quite a while. Um, but they had been adding a lot of uh, new uh, features into uh, this product. So that so operational best practices for a proactive management. What does it really mean? It re, re, it, it means that like you know reduce the time you time it consumes to identify a problem okay and then ensure high performance that we do it with api functional monitoring um, and then make more informed decisions that we we do it through any point visualizer so <clears throat> going forward uh, visualizer it displays different views uh, di uh, views display topics of your application network graph Me you are building your APIs at various, uh, as a part of your API-led uh, network or API-led connectivity, you are building numerous number of APIs. And then in this particular product will basically give you a kind of view of like, you know, how your APIs are laid out, what APIs are interacting with uh, what uh, other APIs and how your uh, experience API is interacting with your uh, process API and also uh, your system APIs. What, are, what does it essentially mean? It, it, it basically gives you a real-time graphical representation of all your APIs, new applications that are running and are discoverable. And then how you make discoverable and all that, like, you know, you have, you have, no, you know, that, and then you have been doing that day in, day out. Um, and then other other, uh, other use cases are you can do architectural review and then you can troubleshoot and then you can you can even measure policy compliance. So this is how your visualizer look. 
um, like say you see that like you know your mobile app, app is interacting or your commerce uh, cloud is interacting with various other APIs and then like you know this is at the architecture level and then you see this red and orange like you know some are in in a, in a state like you know it was about to fail and some are actually down 100% down so that will give you kind of like you know uh, oh this is this is where the problem is and then you you can easily fix the problem because this is already telling you where the problem is and then by the after that like you go look at look at the logs and then you, you you look at that api what is wrong with that api you need to restart that api or you need to fix something on that api various things it it evolves from there and then uh, again like you know you have uh, policies like you know how uh, how you have applied to your policies like you know is your are your policies okay and uh, i mean policy wise your applications are green orange or red and things like that <clears throat> so uh, what are visualizer users right it basically discusses current state design like you know how your design is laid out what apis are interacting uh, in your enterprise like you know how you are building your api network how you are making those connections if you if you look at here it basically talks about system process and experience layers and uh, and like you know how your other api i mean external applications are using it and here you, it gives you what are the different mule apis uh, deployed at each level and then uh, define and visualize api led uh, uh, api led visualizing in flight development like you know uh, and the impact to the architect i mean is your i mean how, how, when you start developing your apis right you will also need to take a uh, always have to review and make sure like you know um, are we on the right track and then if we are not we have to make course corrections because the the sooner you identify that problem and then fix that problem the more saving you do for your company and your enterprise and then reducing time uh, time for uh, uh, identifying a production issue and then ensuring policy compliance like you know policy compliance is very important because you can also know that like you know which apis are not properly secured where you haven't applied secure policies are like you know where you aren't doing uh, on the system api like you know where you are like you know throttling or like you know how how your api some legacy apis like you know have to work in a certain fashion all those things you can discover from uh, with the, with the help of this tool this tool is really uh, kind of like you know very handy when when it comes to uh, increase your productivity uh, of your uh, uh, of your team and then faster to faster time to market and things like that <clears throat> see here like you know how you can also see what are my bound connections which apis are connecting into my api my, i mean meaning like you know you have a process api how how you are what are your inbound connections like where 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 uh, this api is getting called from so all of that is very clear from this one i mean you have various options you can measure average response time you can measure average throughput you can you can also see what errors you have average cpi utilization there are other like you know 17 different 17 to 18 17 plus uh, various metrics you can measure out of this and then see this this is how your error view will look like like where the errors are and then what kind of errors which apis are impacted and all of that you can you can see from this diagram And then like, you know, here is how uh, you are, uh, I mean, what are the different policies you are applying here? What are what, one customer API? What are you applying? Like, you know, for example, this is give, this is to give you an example, like, you know, how uh, you can see what policies are applied, what are we doing and what is lagging on this particular API and things like that. Hey, now comes a question. Um, what what are the permissions required to create uh, uh, views and make customizations exist on to existing views on any point visualizer uh, are we seeing answers sonali uh, 
Hello. I can see the answers. Uh, I think all of them has replied to answer B. Is this the yeah. correct answer, Arvind? B is the correct answer. Yes, I can see Jayant Gorinta. Uh, he gave the first reply. Uh, okay. Jayant, uh, thank you uh, reply and you are you have the correct answer. So can you please share your email address with me? And all of them who replied, all of them gave the correct answer. So congratulations for that. Thank you, guys. Let's move on. <clears throat> and uh, this is this is the other view of policies, like you know where like I'm I'm seeing like you know where all I implemented client ID enforcement here. It's easily identify which APIs are missing that policy. And if you look at here in the in the row two, um, there are few pol few a uh, few APIs which has that uh, policy missing. So. We, we can easily identify what is lagging where, and then are we good? And then this will uh, give you a lot of uh, insights and in, in, in like, you know, fix your problems quickly. And then, or like, you know, if you're, if, if somebody from uh, some, some, somebody who is reviewing this particular uh, project or like, you know, this particular program, I mean, they'll be, they'll get a stop snapshot of like, you know, of, all your policy administration and then compliance and everything can be known from this particular uh, screen. Uh, so some of the visualizer recommendations, right? I mean, create layers and tags and provide friendly names. Um, this is uh, one of the best practices um, we, we need to follow. And then layer uh, traditionally aligned API-led model. Please don't rename it as like you know custom names. I mean, make it easier to understand for anybody who is looking at uh, any architect who is looking at your uh, because people do kind of quickly understand like you know what's going on, and then um, they can easily uh, help you with your uh, with, with with fixing the problems or what. Okay. Display name provides human readable title, not a title to a node. I mean, always name your APIs with a proper a proper API names, meaning um, uh, meaning like you know whatever convention you are following in your code, and then however you are you are uh, putting your APIs into Exchange, same names should be actually used for representing your APIs on the display here. Okay. And automate uh, automate assignment of tags and layers in CI/CD itself. So when you are doing your CI/CD, um, at that point of time, uh, basically just give proper names and then like you know uh, some of the some of the things you need to follow here. Um, this will really uh, help you. And then create and share views encapsulating needs of personas, holistic projects, environments, deployments, and, and so on. So that, like you know, you can see what your projects are, or project-wise view, or environment-wise view, and your department-wise view. I mean, if you create that, I mean, people looking at your dashboards are have a complete snapshot of, like you know, high-level snapshot of what's really happening in that uh, particular department or environment or on that particular project. So now from visualizer, we, we shift gears into monitoring. Um, so there are, there are, there are many, uh, why monitoring? Because like, you know, monitoring is, is a very crucial part of your uh, operations because when you monitor your applications, you, you need a, you need a robust tool to monitor your applications and then see the health of your applications, health of your environment. Um, and then all all those things so with any point monitoring you can do application performance monitoring you management and then you can create custom metrics and events so what do what do you get with platinum uh, i mean there are like you know two kinds of licensing which mulesoft offers one is your platinum offering and then like you know you have your 
uh, titanium offering. So if you have a platinum of feature, you get a, in your application performance monitoring, you get application metrics, for API functional monitoring, and then basic alerting, okay? And then in log management, you get basic logging and basic log search. And then custom metrics and events, like, you know, you get basic custom dashboards. And then uh, in monitoring infrastructure, it is a shared mon monitoring infrastructure. Now let's see what they offer in like, you know, titanium titanium feature. And all these other things can get, uh, will get added as you see uh, from this slide. And you can read up more on docs.millsoft.com with respect to this. Oh, we have another question here. So which visualization in any point visualizer, uh, visualizer can be used to understand the impact of new project changes on existing APIs in the application network? Do we have an answer? Yes, Arvin, we have answer A, answer B, uh, some has given C, and uh, so I would like to... So uh, who answered A uh, first? Okay, so Sham Kulkarni, he gave okay. the first answer A. Yeah, I think that's, that's the right, the right answer. answer, and then Sham is the winner for this question. Thank you so much, all of you, for answering quickly. And Sham, congratulations to uh, win the question and the trivia quiz question uh, voucher. Uh, thank you so much. Can you please uh, share your email address with me here? And thank you so much, all of you, to provide the answer very quickly. Thank you, we guys. Really appreciate Let's yeah, thank you. Thank I mean, you so much. You know, we have one question from Kalyani here that she would like to know what subscription is required to fully utilize the visualize, visualizer. Titanium. I mean, Titanium has a lot of a uh, um, um, lot of various uh, what do you call the features, right? If you go back to this slide, if you look at this slide, um, Titanium has like you know wide variety of options. And then a lot of a uh, lot, lot of different kinds of monitoring uh, aspects it provides. So titanium is uh, is the way to go. But titanium is also, I mean, like you know, it's kind of uh, expensive. But uh, I mean, like you know, more than what platinum is right now. Uh, uh, so Kalyani, hope you uh, got your answer. Is anybody else has any question? So we have another question from Rajiv that how far visualizer go in order to build the statistics? Also, does visualizer works on non-mule app as well? So I I definitely know that mule uh, visualizer works definitely for mule APIs. And it depends on how you laid out your APIs and then what kind of uh, APIs and all that. Uh, and uh, I definitely do not know the answer whether it supports. Uh, uh, I need to find out and then I can answer that question. Uh, Rajiv, you will definitely get the answer for this question. Thanks for your question. And uh, is anybody else has any other question? Okay, I think like, you know, let's move on. Um, I'll take questions uh, 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 after after a few slides again. Uh, please keep your keep posting your questions and then um, I'll uh, get you answers if I can't answer now. So let's look at like, you know, what uh, what is application monitoring? So um, application performance monitoring, we have about like, you know, 80 plus out of the box metrics available, inbound and outbound traffic statistics. It gives you what, what, what is my, what are my inbound rates and then like, you know, uh, what are my average response times 
and then uh, it will basically give you all kinds of application performance data um, in terms of response times, in terms of CPI utiliz CPU utilization, uh, and like you know uh, memory utilization, and then uh, also it provides JVM insights and then infrastructure statistics. And then it will also uh, 14 plus flow level metrics um, and uh, yeah, application can have multiple flows, pinpoint the poor response, responding flows quickly. And this to me is a, is a very big winner because um, and then if you can really point out and then see which part of your flow is taking more, more response times and then um that indicates like you know your uh, api needs to be revisited it, i mean that particular flow needs to be revisited and then look at like you know how you can optimize that those kind of info insights are really really essential when you are actually working with uh, a retail customer or uh, or a banking customer or any other financial customer because everything is like you know pretty much real time and then um, uh, it, I mean, th there is no, um, uh, I mean, like, you know, a lot of money is involved here and uh, financially also you need to make sure that like, you know, it, uh, uh, for that reason also, you need to make sure that this goes, uh, this works, uh, well all the time. And then your response times be poor. Um, so that said, like, you know, th these are, these are some of the important insights, like, you know, which you can, which you can gain, uh, with your flow level monitoring. Uh, you also have connector uh, connector level uh, metrics. Uh, I mean, it basically enables you to understand key insights at a connector level, pinpoint the issues. Uh, uh, connector level uh, metrics enable you uh, enables a deep and then uh, track metrics across your flows and understand system and uh, endpoint specific behavior. And then connector types are Salesforce database, F F FTP, all, all of this, whatever mentioned on this slide and then others will uh, ba basically it supports all of that. Now uh, to the basic alerting, right? Um, uh, with uh, you can, uh, with platform, you can go up to like 50 basic alerts per hour. Um, with Titanium, you get like, you know, 100 basic alerts per hour. So message count, message error count, message response time, CPU utilization, memory utilization, thread count, um, all of those go good things like, you know, you can, uh, you can set up alerts on. And like, let's look at the advanced monitoring. Advanced alerts are build, built and tied to custom dashboard uh, graphs because like, you know, you, you pick and choose what metrics you want to measure and then you basically create your own custom graph. Um, that's how you basically advanced um, performance monitoring will help you there. And then tracks the trends and creates alerts triggered on based on different conditions. Say, for example, like, you know, you, you need to, uh, you need to make sure that like, you know, your application is always running very uh, smoothly. So instead of say 70% uh, CPU utilization, you want to say set up at like, you know, 50% so that like, you know, you want to make sure that like, you know, you act more quicker than like, you know, like, you know, it gets to 70% and then drastically deteriorate and then your application going down. So uh, identify and address abnormal behaviors, quickly pinpoint issues in your network, and then up to 20 alerts uh, per hour. So, that's what your advanced alerting will support. And then you can also create uh, various. So, so conditions, uh, I mean, you can, you can do all these kinds of like, you know, different uh, alert types you can actually set up. Deployment success, deployment fail, uh, excess event traffic threshold, worker not responding. Probably you guys have all done this one in your runtime manager for your APIs. Um, so, and then it also measures the policy violations and things like that. And uh, I mean, reports across the entire environment, like, you know, compare uh, application health performance quickly and easily uh, 
uh, analyze the resource utilization, start adjust your time ranges and then drill down. So you get like various insights. I mean, it's all about data. It's all about analyzing data, you, you are da how you represent your data, what you want to do with your data, and then where you want to take this data uh, to, and then like, you know, who are your audience? And it caters to every kind of audience. It caters to your um, executive management. It caters to your architects. It caters to your operations folks. It caters to your developers and architects. So uh, we, a wide variety of uh, uh, audience here. And then we also have functional monitoring, uh, measure performance in real time, ensure application network uptime, prevent system failures before they even happen. So any questions here? So, so can I move on? I think I guess silence is golden. <laughs> so I mean, again, like, you know, custom metrics and even right? the visualizer with visualizer, you can actually build custom dashboards based on like, you know, 60 plus different metrics, which comes out of the box. It provides an instant visibility into the performance of your applications, run a uh, detailed analysis of like your, your network. Um, these are like, you know, very different things like, you know, when you look at your application network holistically and then uh, figure out like, you know, if there are any issues in the network and then you need to, you, this also helps you quickly resolve and then plan to resolve like, you know, how you can quickly um, uh, come back solution and then fix that problem. So you also have, uh, uh, you, you can also create a custom metric, uh, say create a sales metric, like, you know, this is how you can do it. Um, there is a custom business event uh, uh, connector, like, you know, we can, which you can use to actually uh, get these, uh, uh, get these kind of uh, uh, things in place. Um, dynamic values for event specific insight and then configure using out of box connector so this is a connector like you know which you you get um, it's called create business uh, custom business event connector or something like that i need to find out but then i can get you that uh, uh, information and there are some advanced uh, ad advanced custom dashboards like you know these these cu advanced custom dashboards right these cater to uh, pretty much to uh, somebody who, who is like you know analyzing and then looking at at uh, uh, looking at the impact of APIs on business performance in real time and then create a business facing dashboards with clicks um, not 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 code um, that is a major feature right like you know we don't want to spend too much time coding again and then creating those insights leverage insights to optimize your business and API uh, programs. So now we talk about log management. Um, log management, Cloud Hub stores up to 100 meg uh, data uh, data of log per application per worker uh, or up to 30 days, okay? Whichever uh, limit reaches the first. I mean, with the kind of logging we do sometimes, I mean, that 100 MB can be reached in a, in a, in a just a day or two. So, uh, it uh, it basically provides uh, basic search capabilities, no log aggregation. Okay, um, those are uh, the, those are the features in your basic logging. So now distributed logging, uh, distributed log management, search raw log and then uh, even data across your network. Use a query builder to query builder kind of. I mean, like you know, make SQL queries kind of. Uh, Use the query builder to basically filter log data. View aggregated logs of multiple Mule applications. Quickly and easily pinpoint the root cause of your problem. That's what we essentially do most of the time when we actually look at our logs. And you also have advanced log search capabilities. 
you can change time like you know build a in depth query uh, pinpointing specific data uh, using query dsl and then save your log searches to easily rerun them in future and then specify your time window you can change your time window from 15 minutes to anywhere to like you know 3 days 4 days week whatever month or whatever um and then filter based on uh, a specific element it can be your application it can be your class it can be your environment your environment type log level logger whatever right Codeless logging um, generates log real time via configuration only. Um, uh, meaning, like you know, you're not writing any code to create a log. Interactively uh, extract the data from running applications on demand, and then reduce application complexity by replacing code with configuration. Extract data from outside any point via proxies. Um, and then also search uh, across all logs with log management you can also do log warehousing uh, where like you know you have mule mule apps here and then your real time search uh, tier with uh, customizable retention um, and then your log, log raw log warehouse tier um, so it stores like you know large amount of data even up to petabytes uh, a two tier uh, storage data architecture enables unique flexibility. Um, retention of real time search and raw data storage tiers independently, and then enable auditing, security, and compliance. Oh, this is one, one of the very important feature. Um, this one, this tokenization, offers only in RTF. Uh, in RTF, this is uh, the, they offer this tokenization feature. See, if you are playing around with any of the PII data like credit card, social security, or your uh, other uh, other personal information, you can basically tokenize that data and uh, uh, bring bank grade level of security to your logs, supplement encryption in transit and uh, encryption at rest. Great solution for PIA and PHH, PHI, sensitive data, multi-cloud, uh, multi-cloud, and uh, remove a sensitive log data from uh, from the scope of compliance. See, this this is really essential because, like you know, we don't want. Sometimes what happens is we uh, we as developers and uh, develop. I mean, our developers when when they get into code, they they write everything into the log. And then sometimes that is not right uh, because it can contain your PHI and health related information or personal information, which can lead to a lot of other compliance issues. And then it can cost organizations a lot. So this feature is really very important. So log tokenization feature can be applied uh, to which deployment model? Okay, so we got uh, answers from uh, four to five people still yeah, giving answers, but we mostly have the answer C, answer B, answer A. C is the correct answer. Uh, whoever answered C first, they are so, the winner. Congratulations to Omkar Thamma. He gave the first answer C, and the voucher goes to him. Thank you so much for answering everyone uh, so quickly. And uh, congratulations, Omkar, once again. Share your email address with us, please. OK, thank you, guys. Any questions at this point of time? OK. Oh, dedicated, dedicated uh, monitoring infrastructure. Let's talk about it. Um, so shared monitoring infrastructure, basic any point monitoring, platinum is hosted on a state in, shared infrastructure. Customer data is, isol is isolated via multi-tenancy constructs. Um, data is stored in the US East, uh, North Virginia. Um, and Cloud up store stores logs up to 100 megs per application.
पार वार कर एंड वी हैव चॉइस ऑफ जोग्राफिकल लोकेशन जोग्राफिक स्टोरेज लोकेशन वी हैव यूएस ईस्ट in like you know when you are working with eu clients like you know the data needs to reside in european union and because of the gdpr um, compliance and lot of other uh, european specific compliance uh, policies and uh, flexible hyper hyperscale data storage 200 giga, uh, gigabytes per prod core and then 50 uh, gig, gigs for uh, uh, pre pre prod core um and uh, if required additional storage in 1 tb increments can be purchased uh, i mean for this like you know you need to contact milsoft uh, for that and then i'll open the floor for the question and answers thank you so much for giving me to present any point monitoring and uh, 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 and the deep insights it provides into your uh, application network um, so uh, i'll open the floor for question and answers please uh, feel free to anybody has any questions feel free to ask Well, I think nobody has any question. Everybody got the topic very well, I guess. So, I mean, we we covered trivia already, and uh, so th this is uh, some. Mm, yeah, thank you so much, Arvind, for uh, spending time and giving lot of insights into any point monitoring. any point visualizer custom monitoring uh functional monitoring that's a very good topic and uh, definitely uh, we have a lot of insights on the titanium and platinum uh, features uh, for monitoring so that's mm -hmm. really amazing that we can uh, use this knowledge in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, work that's really really useful so let's have some a uh, few things about the next meet up so thank you uh, thank you everyone for attending the meet up uh, today uh, thanks for having a great session with us and please share your feedbacks with us at meetup@newsoft.com and you can contact me for any feed uh, any feedbacks uh, any topic you want Uh, me to organize in the next meetup so you are very very welcome for that i am looking forward for the great topics uh, in the next meetups uh, even for the next year uh, we want to schedule the great meetups in the chicago group uh, chicago region so definitely i am looking forward for the great topics and your uh, feedback so we can improve we can have great sessions we can have great uh great 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 uh enhancement in the chicago group meetup and definitely the next topic uh the next meetup is on december 19 that is next sunday uh, mo morning 9 am central time so please don't forget to attend the next meetup we have a great great speaker ravi thamada he don't need any introduction he is going to present on the topic um uh, you execution engine and the data wave memory management uh it's a great topic it's a really great speaker we uh, all want to learn from him it's re, uh, you definitely don't want to miss this session please join us in the next sunday at 9 am es uh, central time and 10 am uh, eastern time uh definitely the please don't don't forget to join the next meetup Thank you so much for spending time and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Guys, uh, one, 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 uh, one, one thing uh, I just want to mention. Uh, please, uh, kind of like you know, um, if you have a topic to present, reach out to Sonali um, and uh, and help her out. Like you know, when if you want to present something and uh, uh, 
make it uh, make this meetup successful and um, uh, feel free to send questions across and then uh, uh, le let us know if you need uh, uh, anything else um, this this is uh, this is great like you know thank you for giving me an opportunity sonali and then um, uh, presenting again on your meetup with another topic at a, at another date thank you so much arvin uh, it's all my pleasure to having you in the speak uh, as a speaker and thank you so much for the great session and uh, for your time uh, taking some time sunday morning thank you so much thank you all. thank you everyone and see you in the next meetup thank you <laughs>